Your ministry, Canyon Walker Connections, is geared toward engagement, encouragement, and education between the lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender Christian community and the conservative Christian church. Can you tell us how this ministry came to be and where you see it going? Well, in 2001, I held fairly consistent views with the majority of the Evangelical Baptist and other conservative denominations of the Christian church. I thought gay people had chosen to be gay. You know, the whole nurture versus nature uh, belief system that was coming out of the 60s, 70s, and 80s. It was still very much in the, it still is very much in the conservative churches. And I would have used the term sexual preference at that time because I thought there was a choice involved. I thought that intimate relationships of gay people were based in lust and not love. Uh, and I didn't come to that conclusion from any kind of relationship with gay people. I came to that conclusion from the Christian rhetoric that I heard from the Christian culture that I was in, and I still am in. I still attend a conservative Christian church. I have for the last 22 years been in the same one. But it's important to know that part of my personal story in this time of transition <clears throat> was that in 2001, I was going through the end of a 20-year marriage. There were infidelity issues. And although I have always had an ease with evangelism, that crisis of my marriage ending in my own life shut my mouth <laughs> for the first time. And that ability and the desire to tell others what to do felt rather hypocritical to me. So my life, um, the obedience to God to do in my, li my own life, that obedient cur uh, line of if I do A, B will occur, just didn't seem to be worth telling somebody else to do. So I just, I felt in a place where I couldn't tell anyone else to do and uh, what to do. And that, that was a very important point to note. I'm a daily hiker, actually in these canyons. And you may, during this filming, see my dogs run back and forth. This is where I've been coming for about two decades. I use this time and this space to exercise my dogs and myself. But the more essential thing that happens on these trails in this canyon is that I take the time to, and the time and the space to detox from the cares and to connect with God and nature. That's really important to me. Um, Isaiah says, be still and know that I am, God, and I am God, but in one translation, that actually means to get out of the traffic, and this is where I get out of the traffic. I remember praying intentionally on these, on these trails more than a decade ago, on this dirt, that these canyons would become a sacred space to me, that I would hear God and that I would take the time to have conversations with other people that meant something. And uh, in 2001, when my marriage was falling apart, I was hurting quite a bit. And each day I would take a rock and I would put it in the crook of a tree. And that was my way of dedicating that day and just another day to God. And I was building an altar to God with each one of those rocks that I put in the tree. And each day I would say, I'm doing this and I'm doing this your way and I'm moving forward. So it was these, on these trails in 2001 that I met a hiker and I was fairly sure she was a lesbian and my pre-crisis self would have made certain that I told her the message of the gospel. But because of where I was, that authenticity of message couldn't and wouldn't come out of me. I couldn't say, oh, come look at the power and the good things you too can have in Christ Jesus because it wasn't bursting forth from me. I was hurting too much. So what I did was I just did relationship with my new hiking friend, Neto. It was a year before Neto came out to me, and when she did, I already loved her as a friend. So I think it's ironic that God would use an agnostic at the time, Native American lesbian, to teach this seasoned, evangelical, devout Christian what compassion and non-agendaed love looks like. And then over the next five years, I became entrenched in circles of lesbian and gay, lesbians and gay men, but I never met a gay Christian, not that I knew of. And this all served to reinforce my nonverbal point of view that you couldn't be both gay and Christian at the same time. In 2006, I saw an article about Justin Lee and the Gay Christian Network on the front page of the New York Times. 
the coexistence of those two words, gay and Christian side by side, they, they just stunned me. And I know it stuns a lot of people now still. And I had been led to believe that they were mutually exclusive words and that no, but, but no gay Christian had ever challenged me on those views before. The short version is three weeks later, I went to the Gay Christian Network Conference in Seattle. And that was in January of 2007. And the first night of corporate worship, I was standing at the back of the room behind about 300 uh, gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender Christians worshiping. And I knew that the Holy Spirit in me was resonate, resonating with what was happening in front of me. And that was my two freedom point. It happened pretty quickly. I had no theology to support my internal shift that was starting to go on at that point. But I knew what I had been told and believed about faith and sexual orientation is wrong. That's all I knew, that that was wrong. And as to the second part of the question, where do I see this all going, the work of Canyon Walker Connections? Well, I started working on full-time education and encouragement between the conservative church and the lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender Christian community in 2000, and probably eight full-time, but in 2011, I formed a 501c3 called Canyon Walker Connections. It's taken a decade of learning and living alongside of lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender people to be able to learn compassion and passion, and now to be able to use those skills as hopefully a leader within the conservative church in modeling engagement, encouragement, and education, because we sure do need all of those things going on. Church leaders and pastors know they need to um, have the sexual orientation and faith conversation, but sadly, Few, very few, are equipped to have a productive conversation in this. They're not educated on the issue with real facts, just as I was. They hold true, uh, held as true myths and tired old statistics that were never true in the first place. I've seen too many churches take destructive steps by inviting what's called in ex-gay speakers, people that say they were <clears throat> that were gay before and are no longer gay, they invite them in to lead conversations or to teach in conservative congregations. And those speakers aren't being accurate. It would be far more authentic to invite in some gay and transgender Christians to have dialogue and listen to them or to have dialogues alongside of these people and to not have it be so one-sided. I guarantee you, that those lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender Christians have spent plenty of time studying, praying, and considering the verses that you are judging them on, the conservative church. Let people in the pew, pews hear both sides of the conversations and let them make some informed conclusions, but that rarely happens. People aren't that brave, so it rarely happens, but it needs to happen. There are several resources that are educated, equipped, and called to do this work, this productive, help people have, help churches have productive conversations. I'm only one of them. And I've joked with friends before that at times I felt so two years from now. But what I'm surprised that's happening in the conservative circles is that time is really compressing, and that surprises me. People are ready to have this conversation sooner than I would have anticipated that they do. More people, and certainly more young people, are coming out in their churches and they're not wanting to leave those faith communities. There's an abundance of positive role mo models that they see and there's wonderful amount of online resources for them. And it's time for them to help them in their efforts to investigate the coexistence of Christianity and non-heterosexual orientation. They don't want to leave those churches and they shouldn't be forced to leave the churches. That's what used to happen in the past. That That shouldn't be happening now. Conservative churches seem to be fearful to have this kind of conversation. It may be uncomfortable, but um, it's unavoidable. These conversations are going to have to happen in churches. Christians have been struggling with understanding the gospel since Peter suggested opening the club to the Gentiles and allowing Christians to eat non-kosher and not have to undergo circumcision. This is our issue in the church in our time to contend with. Within our culture, we're exposed to people 
that are both gay and transgender, and they have salvation experiences. They have changed lives, except for their sexual orientation or their gender identity, and that shouldn't be expected. They display the fruits of the Spirit. They have testimonies of salvation with Christ. And these are the indicators of a person that we would call a Christian. So rather than carelessly tossing these fellow brothers and sisters in Christ aside, and losing their valuable assets and the richness that they bring to the Christian church, we need to figure out how to have this conversation in productive ways within our churches. I'm convinced that we've done a great deal of damage to a class of people, and the destruction is so egregious that it's also tainted the public image of Christianity. I've been very faithful to my evangelical roots, and I'm not willing to walk out or abandon the faith that I love. I'm not willing to let the first describer of Christian be anti-gay, followed closely by hypocrite. When you say Jesus, people say love. But that's not what happens when we say Christian. People don't say love. So I'm hoping that we can return to that message of love as being um, a message that people understand when they hear the word Christian. So biblical, productive, educated, informed, compassionate dialogues full of grace need to be taking place on the issue of same-sex loving people in faith. And I'm hoping to be of help to churches so that I can help spearhead these efforts along with other people that do the work so that we can look more like Jesus, the Jesus that we follow and serve. I'm Kathy with Canyon Walker Connections.